Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 69 in the book of First Corinthians. We're going to tackle a big one today, which is, why is there evil? And I'm going to change the question because uh, that question is too hard for me. But I am going to answer this question today, which is similar, which is, when is there evil? So yesterday, uh, Paul's making an argument, and he gives like six reasons, six things that happen if Christ wasn't ra- Christ was not raised. If he wasn't raised, then we have a false savior. Number one, number two, our preaching is in vain. Number three, my favorite, your faith is in vain. Number four, your teachers are lying, your podcasters are lying. Number five, the power of sin is unbroken, which which means you are unforgiven. And you're carrying all the penalty with you. And number six, the dead are not raised. So you got your sin problem and you got your dead death problems. And if all that happens, number seven, then Christians are the most pathetic people in the world and you should pity them. But then, verse 20, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. And then he's going to give us six or seven things that are true and what can we hope in so we're going to define hope we're going to find out what happens to evil we're going to find out what happens to heaven we're going to find out what happens to death we're going to find out what happens to sin listen in here it is this is first corinthians chapter 15 let's start with the bad news if in christ we have hope in this life only we are of people most to be pitied. That was the end of yesterday's passage. Here it is, verse 20. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all be made alive but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. So, if Christ has been raised, it addresses our resurrection, it addresses our aliveness, it it, it addresses who we belong to, it addresses what kingdom we're going to live in, it tells us what's going to happen to evil and when it's going to happen to evil, my favorite. It tells us what happens to death, and all these things are kind of like, what is the definition of, of, of hope that Christians hope in? Faith, hope, and love, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, abide. Well, what are we hoping in all these things here today? So what is Christian hope? And this is kind of the prediction of our of the future. It's, it is the cause. Uh, so do you, do you feel a life full of pain and decay and suffering and sin and death and betrayal? And... Um, and with a couple of interspersed joyful things of babies being born and going to weddings, uh, have you felt that that uh, frustration in our in our life? So everything, it all, the keystone of, of this whole thing is: if Christ is raised, we're in good shape. If Christ wasn't raised, it's everything crumbles. Everything crumbles without the resurrection. Uh, so let's talk about the things that happens. If Christ was raised, number one, verse 22, resurrection. That is your death problem has been solved. That's good news. Number two, aliveness. Have you ever stood at a hospital bed or a hospice bed or a gravesite or maybe a birthing suite and had your heart turned inside out because someone died? Who did you know a long time before death separated you? Maybe a parent or you have somebody. Or maybe who did you know not even a short time before death separated you? Have you ever wept your guts out because of that? Well, 
Verse 22, you're going to be alive. They're going to be alive. He's going to solve that problem. And then verse 23, the belonging part. Absent Jesus, you've got this sin problem, as we discussed yesterday. You've got this death problem. You've got penalties. You've got judgment. You've got a judgment seat. And then poof, with all these epic benefits, if you if you sign up with Jesus by faith, you get all these amazing privileges. And how did you get it? By your faith and your trust? It's, it's like all these things go away. You say, poof. I belong to him. Sin problem gone. Poof, I belong to him. My death problem gone. I mean, what a great, where can I sign up for that? I'll tell you later. Verse 24. The next thing you get is the kingdom. You know, it's, this is not like a cruise brochure to the Greek islands. This is the kingdom of God forever. It's not a seven-day cruise in the Aegean Sea. It's, it's kingdom forever. And then the big stuff, let's destroy evil. Every rule, every authority, every power is going to be destroyed. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2.8 says the lawless one is going to be revealed and destroyed with the breath of his mouth, and he's going to bring to nothing. He's going to bring him to nothing by the appearance of his coming. Just like, boom, he's going to just take care of evil. And then finally, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. All right, so have you ever had an interaction with death that was unpleasant? Have you ever had evil in your world that's touched you and made you cringe? Have you ever realized that this is a broken place and this is not our real home and that you long to belong to him? Have you ever thought that our world is upside down and we're populated by spiritual orphans and ruled by anything but love and you've got authorities and powers which are given to to the wrong guy have you ever been frustrated about your heritage from adam adam the death bringer and uh have you ever read the front page of the paper uh and know that you were not meant for this world you're built from another kingdom and that you want to belong to a different family or have you ever thought about why is there evil so today, I'm not going to answer that question, why is there evil? But I am going to answer the question, when is there evil? Well, it's till now, until this moment in time. Then comes the end. He's going to deliver the kingdom. He's going to destroy death. And he's going to stop evil. Every rule, authority, and power is going to stop instantly on that day. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that? I sure do. Thank you for listening.